Hello and welcome to Rising Earth News. I'm Lily and today I'm joined by Beth Birch from the Washing Machine Project, a project aiming to alleviate the burden of hand washing. So hi Beth, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, it's lovely to be here. So just before we start off, could you tell us what the problem is with hand washing and why there needs to be a solution out there? Yes, yeah, so hand washing in itself isn't necessarily a problem. It's something that is done by around 5 million people across the globe. And it was done here as well before we had the easy just switch on electric washing machines. So it's done uh, across the world and it's done in different ways. So culture and traditions will impact how people wash and they will also have different sources of water. So some people will wash in streams um, and rivers and some people will have tap water sources. So it really depends on like their context for how they wash, wash their clothes. Um, but the problem that we're trying to solve is the burdens that are associated with the hand washing. So the first one of those is the cost of time. So it takes a hell of a lot of time to hand wash clothes. We've recorded from our research that we've got about 20 hours a week. Um, people can be, can be hand washing clothes. It's just a huge proportion of time. And we've found that this is disproportionately placed on women. Uh, the second thing is a cost to physical health. So we know that it is hard on their back and their joints and as well on their hands for skin irritation. So constantly having hands placed in cold water or in detergent, these are chemicals which are irritating the skin. And then the final one is um, a, the water usage. So we know that they can use up to 40 litres of water per hand wash, which is a hell of a lot of water when some of these areas are very um, conscious about the use of their water and particularly at the moment during the pandemic um, where more water needs to be used for sanitation, water scarcity is, is a real big problem. So those are the areas that we're trying to alleviate the burden to give people back uh, time and more water and things like that. So how does the Washing Machine Project offer a solution to this burden of hand washing then? How does it actually work? Yeah, so the, the Washing Machine Project has a machine called the Divya, which is a portable, manual, off-grid washing machine. So it's powered by the user. At the moment, in our first iteration, um, which is currently being piloted in Iraq, um, the user will use a um, long stick to manually rotate the machine and it works in the same way as a normal washing machine that we find in Europe. So it's on a horizontal axis, it just rotates and the clothes are washed, rinsed and then they can be spun quickly to dry them out. So it, it works in the same way as a normal washing machine um, but obviously their power comes from the user rather than an external electric source. So by using our machine you can save time, you can stand up so you're not putting any strain on your back or on your shoulders and the water usage is a lot less than it is through hand washing. That's great. So have you had any feedback from people that are using this so far? You know, where has it been trialled? You said Iraq, I think. And have you had feedback from, you know, the consumers? How have they been receiving it? We've had feedback from our current pilot in Iraq. And from that feedback so far, we've found that people are spending less than 30 minutes washing their clothes, which is about a 75% reduction on our, our first research. And then uh, we've also found that some of them are reporting that they are using less water, which is re a really positive thing. Um, we're currently in the midst of sorting out some new pilots. So we're looking at a few different countries. Um, some of those are, we're looking at Jordan, we're looking at Uganda, we're looking at another one in Iraq in a different um, setting. So, and uh, Papua New Guinea is another one that we're looking at. So we're, we're working on a second iteration at the moment based on that feedback. Yeah, so I know that Nav, who founded this project, has a great story to tell about how this story, how this um, project came about. So could you tell us a little bit about how this project came about and maybe also for you, why you decided to get involved in it? Yeah, so uh, Nav, he started the washing machine project. He's the founder. He worked in South India um, for a year designing cook stoves. So he did um, some work with engineers that boarded and he went out there um, and 
worked with, um, he lived next door to Divya, and Divya is also the name of the machine. So Divya is quite a strong um, person in the washing machine project. She's the reason it became what it is now. Um, so he lived next to Divya and Divya was hand washing her clothes all, all the time. Like that's um, sort of how they got t- talking about it. And now I've mentioned to her that she, he would build her a washing machine that was manually powered and you know he said her eyes lit up so it was obviously something that was really needed and would make a huge difference to Divya's life and to many other people's lives so Nav came back to the UK and he decided to set up the washing machine project and through a volunteer network we've managed to take it from what was just an idea now to you know a pilot that's currently happening in Iraq we're on to our second machine so it's really grown uh, in two years that it's been around and for me personally I have always loved design I come from a background in product design and I always wanted to make sure that my design was being used for good so I did some projects in university that were uh, human-centered focused and then uh, came out of university and wanted to make sure that my design was being used in the humanitarian sector so I joined the design engineer uh, back in January this year and then have progressed throughout lockdown into the head of design so yeah that's how I got into it really yeah it's a great idea and so for our final question I want to go a bit more deep for your personal side of things and ask you what a sustainable future looks like to you well that's a difficult one (laughs) so sustainable for future for me personally is one where everybody has access to the basic needs and it's not even a question and the only way I think that we can get there is if we don't over consume so we're a non-consuming way of life in developed countries and developing countries so across the globe um, and I, I think that we need to be moving towards a circular economy so I think our our design rationale is living into that. So we want to ensure that our washing machine is uh, made from materials that can be recycled at the end of life and is a long life product. So it's um, designed for maintenance basically so that it's not got any planned obsolescence, it can keep going. And I think we need to learn to do things differently. You know, if, if we can give manual washing machines to people who are currently hand washing, there's no reason to say why we couldn't then switch that out for the electric machines, you know, which then don't draw on energy sources. Um, so I think we just need to look at different ways of doing things for the future to achieve the sustainable future and be non-consuming. I think that's yeah, it. I completely agree. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Beth. No problem, thank you. Thank you, bye. Thank you for watching Rising Earth News. Don't forget to subscribe and follow our socials for your daily dose of positive eco news. Stay safe, stay green and be a part of the Age of Restoration.